Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. It's Friday, and that means it's time to fire up another free-to-play game here on Big Dave is Cheap. This week, we're returning to the classic Team Fortress 2 to experience the brand new Man vs. Machine mode. This is co-op come to TF2. It is a horde mode co-op with all of the unique bells and whistles you might expect from a Team Fortress 2 product. If you're interested in playing this mode, I would suggest hitting the Play Co-op button. I'll tell you a little bit about how the mode works, because at first glance you might be a bit confused by exactly what these buttons are and what they do, though I have confidence that my audience is intelligent enough to actually decipher it, I'm going to pretend that you're all four-year-olds and explain it anyhow. Now this mode does fragment the community into two camps. The Boot Camp and the Man Up Camp. Man Up requires you to actually pay real money. Boot Camp does not. Boot Camp is your free-to-play option. So even though this show is about free-to-play, we do always cover the monetization that is featured in free-to-play. And so we're going to look at Man Up first. So here you go, Man Up. You can create a party, very nice uh, interface here. You just invite people right off your Steam list, or your Steam friends list. Very nice. You have three maps currently in the game, and in order to play in this Man Up mode, you're going to need to purchase Tour of Duty tickets. You purchase these tickets for a mere 99 cents. You get the ticket, you join a game, you play the entire game, finish it completely, and you get a cosmetic reward. If you don't finish the game for any reason, disconnection, you just quit out of pure frustration or whatever, your ticket is not consumed. It's pretty simple. You play, you win, you get something. You play, you don't win, no problem. Try again later. If you would like to spice things up, say you're sitting down for a play session with your friends, go ahead and purchase a surplus ticket. Squad surplus voucher, to be exact. For $2, you can guarantee everyone in your team a free additional item. So you do still need to purchase your Tour of Duty token, excuse me, ticket, and once you've purchased that, you'll get into the game. You will activate your voucher right here. You'll get your normal Tour of Duty reward plus an additional squad surplus voucher reward. When you are playing with Tour of Duty tokens and you complete missions, they will track that. Once you have completed all six of these objectives, you will get a rare item. These items are cosmetic, as I said before, and equipable through any mode in Team Fortress. So things that you win here in Man vs. Machine can be equipped for standard Team Fortress chicanery out in the public server. So it's an interesting way to monetize, I suppose. You know, you are essentially paying for guaranteed rewards. I don't think I really have a major problem with that. I mean, it does fragment the community, but... Those who want to play and get cool hats and whatnot can play and get cool hats and whatnot, and those who don't can play boot camp. So once you go in, once you go into boot camp, you will notice again the same three maps, slightly more missions, some expanded difficulties, that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, you just click on the one that you want to play or on any mission if you're interested in any old mission, and you start your search. It will begin to search, and it will give you a statistical screen that looks something like this. So this is going to look for a game. It will eventually find one and we will get into it. This pretty much concludes the outside of game differences uh, from regular Team Fortress 2. So I don't really think we need to talk about that too much more. I'm going to go ahead and queue up for a game, get into some action, and I will continue to tell you guys about exactly how this mode feels, how it plays, and what I think about it. So let me start off the gameplay portion of this video by thanking this man right here in all of his preppy scout glory. I am not going to attempt to pronounce that name because anytime there's a name that has two or more vowels in a row, I inevitably mispronounce it. So thank you for holding my hand through a couple of games of Man vs. Machine. This game mode is essentially wave-based horde-style combat. You've played this before. It has been shoehorned into many games that didn't need multiplayer Mass Effect 3. Although actually, Mass Effect 3, that was really fun. I still occasionally fire up that demo and play the multiplayer over on my PS3 console system. So again, Horde Mode Combat, it is co-op, a brand new thing for those of us playing TF2. I have to say, all in all, it is pretty damn fun. You start out as a pretty standard 
version of your class, whichever class you pick, and you slowly upgrade using money that you find during the rounds. If you come in late to a game in progress, you'll basically be given a cash dump, and uh, that will allow you to catch up with your teammates. So you can, um, you can upgrade all sorts of stuff. You can upgrade your uh, clip size, your firing speed, your damage, health on hit, really cool stuff, or on kill, excuse me. And I think it really it really makes a, a difference being able to play and to see a demo man unloading a 10 count clip in three seconds. It's quite hilarious. See the same you see the same things if I can speak. You see the same things with soldiers, etc. It's really, really fun. And you can upgrade all your weapons, and there are some basic upgrades for your character as well, you know, more health, less damage, that sort of stuff. So uh, take a perusal through, take some time, look through and uh, analyze. I'm sure there are going to be min-maxers out there uh, who probably already have released winning builds, quote-unquote. Uh, it's never long before those folks uh, start finding the exact way that you should be playing so that when you join a game and your group loses a wave, someone can inevitably say, Oh God, you're not building that demo man with the clip size plus firing speed? God, you suck, noob! So, uh, yeah, be prepared for some of that as this game ages, but, uh, you know, playing in boot camp, you're just kind of fooling around, you know? People don't tend to rage when you lose a wave. Eh, whatever, it happens, right? So, overall, this is a positive addition to Team Fortress 2. It really, really puts a smile on my face to see Team Fortress 2 continuing with its development. Valve, Uncle Gabe, thank you so much for being such a rad person with an awesome gray beard. I really, really do love that company, and uh, I will gladly purchase most anything you want to foist upon me, uh, Uncle Gabe, so please keep on making amazing games over there at Valve. So Man vs. Machine, in summary, Horde Mode, upgrade your character, kill bots, protect your hole, and have fun. So what else is going on? Well, Just Cause is one of the weekend deals this weekend. Definitely highly recommend that you pick that up. Go ahead and grab it, if for no other reason than just to screw around. There is a fantastic multiplayer mod that is in development right now. I mean, I say fantastic just because all you have to do is put multiplayer and Just Cause 2 in the same sentence and it's fantastic, but uh, it actually looks really good. I saw some videos of the last playtest, and it just looks manic and completely, utterly batshit insane. So it is a game that you just want to own. Like three bucks, 75 cents, come on, put it in your collection. All the DLC is like a quarter a piece. Grab the monster truck, grab the quad rocket launcher, grab some of the stupid stuff, and just have a great open world time. Because of the way that this game is designed, it is definitely more of a chaos simulator than uh, games like uh, Sleeping Dogs or Saints Row or Grand Theft Auto. There's a lot more you can do. You know, you can tether planes to buildings and crazy crap like that. I mean, there's insane stuff that you can do in this game. You will have no end of fun. And uh, if by some chance your fun does eventually end, then play the multiplayer mod. So it's a great game. Go ahead, pick it up. Seriously, just buy it. You need to own it. Not to be outdone by Steam, Gamers Gate is running their summer sale right now, and it is a doozy. They are matching, for the most part, every price that was offered by Steam during their summer spectacular. So it is a really, really nice thing. We are finally seeing a store that is able to stand up and offer competitive prices and compete with Steam for those of you who might not want to tie yourself into a DRM-based platform like the Steam. So check out GamersGate.com. There are amazing prices going on right now. We are in the last week of the sale, but you still have a chance to save on a whole lot of things. Daily deals, weekly deals. It is a doozy of a sale. So moving on to some news that won't cost you any money. The Ludum Dare is going on this weekend. It is number 24. Yes, number 24. You might remember that I did some coverage of number 23. I played several of the games from the competition and the game Jam. If you're not familiar with the way it's laid out, there is a 48-hour competition where individuals can enter their best game incorporating the theme of the event. And there is a more laid-back game jam where you can enter with all your buddies and put out a really cool game. There are real-world gatherings based around the, the Ludum Dare. It's a really, really interesting thing that happens in the community. And uh, there are multiple game jams that happen throughout the year, but this is definitely one that a lot of people wait for. And you do see a lot of these games eventually become uh, real, fully realized ideas that get released at a later date. 
So last but not least, I want to point you guys over to Indie Static. It's a YouTube channel that you may have heard me mention in the past. Josh Mattingly does a great job over there of covering independent games. He works with uh, Indie Game Magazine. He gets some exclusives from time to time, early looks at games. You know, he's kind of in that place that I could see myself maybe getting to eventually, where he is a known commodity to a certain extent in the uh, Indie Games community, and people do come to him for coverage. He has a nice growing channel. He's trying this YouTube game full time, and uh, I'm certainly not going to be sending uh, many subs his way, but I think that you should go over and check out his crowdfunding video. It's an interesting take on the crowdfunding phenomenon, and while I don't agree with every point that he makes, uh, I do love the way that he makes it. He's a handsome son of a bitch with a great and growing channel, and uh, if you are not already subscribed to him, I don't know why you aren't. Go over and check out Josh on Indie Static. So let me just end this video up by saying, man, my jaw hurts. I am suffering for you guys right now. I had a crown done, or the first part of a crown, on Thursday. So uh, if you're not familiar with how crowns uh, get onto your tooth, uh, basically they take a grinder, at, like an industrial grinder, like the sort you'd see on a job site, and they put it in your mouth and they grind your tooth down to a peg. And once that's done, uh, they slap a temporary tooth on top of that. A couple of weeks later, you come back and they shove a gold crown onto that tooth peg. And uh, yeah, as you might imagine, there's a lot of numbing. And when that wears off, there's a lot of pain. So uh, I am nursing a bit of a sore jaw. Don't expect too much from me over the weekend. Uh-oh. I can hear that my kid is awake. He is up. He is screaming upstairs. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bid you guys adieu. Uh, but again, don't expect much out of me for the next few days because I am nursing this sore, sore jaw. I'm going to go play with my kid and have an awesome day. Hope you guys do the same. All right. I have been Big Dave. And until next time, take it easy.